Welcome to another Walter football video. I'm Charlie Campbell, senior draft analyst. Before we get rolling, I suggest you speed it up to 1.25 or 1.5. Also, you can click the link below if you want to follow along on the website, uh, seeing the written form as I lay out these picks. So, first overall, I have the Jaguars taking Aiden Hutchinson, defensive end from Michigan. I've had the Jags taking an end. Uh, all of these months uh, started put one there in December and haven't changed it. I think obviously their actions have proven that's the direction they're going to go. Uh, Walter Football was first to report they wanted Cam Robinson back before they tagged him. Uh, that Doug Peterson was going to be the next head coach. We were ahead on that. Uh, of course, we didn't get credit, but at any rate, I think the Jags are down to, from what I'm hearing, Aiden Hutchinson and Trayvon Walker. I think Hutchinson's the leader, viewed as the safer guy, has a season of big sack production, had more playing time in college. So I think uh, with the recent picks there, they have to get it right. It's a new coaching staff. The team's been burned somewhat by kind of boomer bust guys. Uh, Eh, sorry, car driving through my driveway. Uh, and uh, been burned by boomer bus guys like C.J. Henderson uh, and Jason recently. So I think they're going to err towards the safer guy uh, and go with Hutchinson. Second overall, I have the Lions taking Trayvon Walker. I think Detroit's going to take whichever one that the Jaguars pass on. Uh, but I think Walker might be the preferred guy of the two because he has huge upside. He can play five technique, three technique. He's amazing dropping into coverage for a 6'5", 275 defensive lineman. Uh, he can really rush when he's allowed to. Georgia's scheme, uh, as designed by... Uh, Kirby Smart and the defensive coordinator names escaping me is now at Oregon at the head coach. It was really designed to help the edge rushers produce bigger sack totals. That's why you saw that with Aziz Ojolari a year ago. Then this year you see uh, good sack totals out of Nakobe Dean. Adam Anderson was on his way to a double digit sack season uh, halfway through the year before the suspension hit. The interior guys like Walker and Davis, it was designed for them to help the edge rushers come free and seal the deal. But when allowed to rush, Walker was really phenomenal. Check out the Michigan game. Look at the Clemson game. The game's bracketing the season. Uh, and he just really was showing the ability to get after the quarterback, beating guards, beating tackles, really versatile. So uh, this is a difference maker that Detroit badly needs on their defensive line. Third overall, I have Houston taking Derek Stingley, cornerback from LSU. Probably going to switch this pick to Ahmad Gardner soon. I think that he might be the preferred uh, player there for the Texans. But if you look at their draft class as a whole with their needs, cornerback, defensive line, wide receiver, they get a better value of picks by going with the cornerback first because the cornerback talent drops off after Gardner and Stingley, a little bit of a drop off to McDuffie, and then a huge drop off after McDuffie, where there isn't as big of a drop off from the ends going up high, Hutchinson, Walker, Thibodeau, to the next kind of guys of Jermaine Johnson, Carl Aftis, not as big of a drop off. So for the Texans, they can get one of those ends at 13, get a good receiver. There'll be good receivers available in the second round, and I think that's their best collection of talent to infuse into the roster. So going with that cornerback first, get them the number one corner, I think makes sense. Fourth overall, I have the Jets taking Kayvon Thibodeau, edge rusher from Oregon. They need another edge rusher across from Carl Lawson. I think Thibodeau uh, could come in and contribute quickly and be a good fit there in Robert Sala's defense. Fifth overall, I have the Giants taking Evan Neal, left tackle from Alabama for the Giants. think they move him on the right side, pair him with Andrew Thomas. Now you got a couple big bookends that are tough run blockers, Give, improve the pass protection for Daniel Jones and really help uh, run the ball next season with Saquon Barkley in a make or break year uh, for Barkley and Jones. Sixth overall, I have the Panthers taking Kenny Pickett, quarterback from Pitt. I think for Ben McAdoo and his offense, uh, I think Pickett obviously uh, is the most pro ready guy of the class. 
Malik Willis has a better skill set in terms of uh, bigger arm running ability. Pickett's the more natural pocket passer, more accurate, reads the field better, uh, taller, sees the field better. Willis can get blinded in the pocket. The Panthers need a guy to come in and, and save Matt Rule's job. Uh, if Pickett plays well as a rookie, then Rule would probably be safe to get to year four. Uh, but if he doesn't play well, he's going to get fired. And Willis, I think, is further along in a developmental standpoint. And I think Pickett just fits Ben McAdoo more uh, schematically. So I think he's the pick there for Carolina. Seventh overall, I have the Giants taking Ahmad Gardner. They could use young cornerback talent. James Bradbury, Adoree Jackson have bigger contracts signed by the last regime. So I could definitely see them looking to uh, improve the cornerbacks and get some youth there and take Gardner. Uh, eighth overall, I have the Falcons taking Jermaine Johnson, defensive end from uh, Florida State. They could use more edge rush talent. They were last in the NFL in sacks. Jermaine Johnson, plug and play upgrade, tough, fast, really good defender uh, in both phases. So I could see him being an immediate upgrade for Atlanta. Ninth overall, I have Seattle taking a Kem Akonwu left tackle from uh, NC State. They need a replacement for Dwayne Brown. Akonwu would be a good fit there uh, for Seattle. Tenth overall, I have the Jets taking Drake London, wide receiver from USC. Give them a playmaker for uh, for Wilson here in year two. Obviously, Zach Wilson, this is a huge year for him in terms of showing he's headed in the right direction and for him to save the jobs of a lot of the guys in the front office there. Uh, so they need him to play step up. Drake London with his size mismatch ability, uh, that's God-given. It comes in and plays immediately, will help in the red zone, uh, will help as a possessional receiver, a guy who can make things happen after the catch. So I think he could be a plug-and-play upgrade there for New York. 11th overall, I have Washington taking Kyle Hamilton, safety from Notre Dame give them a playmaker on the back end, a guy that can really uh, help in both phases, run game, uh, pass pass protection, uh, pass coverage downfield. He's got speed, athleticism, phenomenal ball skills. I think he'd be a real upgrade there for the commanders. 12th overall, I have the Vikings taking Trent McDuffie, cornerback from Washington. They need cornerback help. McDuffie uh, is the best available. He's smooth, cover corner, runs the route, prevents separation. I think he's, uh, as far as cornerbacks go, a pretty safe pick to turn into a solid pro. For 13th overall, we have the Texans, and I have them taking Houston. Uh, I have Houston taking George Karloftis, defensive end from Purdue. Give them an edge rusher they badly need to go across from John Grenard. Uh, he'd be a good fit in, for Lovey Smith's defense in terms of his ability to get after the quarterback. He has size. They're going to need to work with him on run defense, but I think that's something that will come along, and he'd be a good fit there for the Texans. All right, 14th overall, I have the Ravens taking Charles Cross, left tackle from Mississippi State. This is a really a steal for Baltimore, but there's just only so many spots some of these tackles can go with a Conwu uh, and um, Evan Neal and Cross, and I think one of them could slide just because of needs of these teams picking in the top half of the first round, and this is a steal for the Ravens. Give them a bookend to go with Ronnie Stanley. If Ronnie Stanley gets hurt, Cross could move to left tackle. Uh, he's a really good player. I know a lot of teams are really high on him uh, and feel he's right up there with Neal and Akonwu, even though he hasn't gotten the hype uh, that those guys have gotten. 15th overall, I have the Eagles taking N'Kobe Dean, linebacker from Georgia. Probably going to be dropping Dean soon. Uh, his pro day workout, from what I've heard from team sources, wasn't very good. He was uh, working out, even though he uh, was dealing with injuries and not feeling well, uh, but he worked out anyway for the scouts and wasn't kind of up to his normal ability, not quite in football shape as he's recovering. So uh, I think he's kind of a guy that's sliding right now. Um, but the Eagles badly need linebacker help. They have two picks in the first round. They could definitely consider uh, taking Dean. 
16th overall, I have the Saints taking Garrett Wilson, wide receiver from Ohio State. Give them a playmaker. They need speed in that offense, a receiver to go with Michael Thomas. 17th overall, I have the Chargers taking Jordan Davis. This is a dream pick come true for, for, the, uh, for the Chargers. Get them that big, heavy nose tackle from Georgia that can stuff the run. Uh, put him next to Jerry Tillery and Joey Bosa and free those guys up the way he occupies blocks. This would be a, a dream pick uh, for Los Angeles. 18th overall, I have the Eagles taking Jamison Williams, wide receiver from Alabama. Give them another speed demon. Uh, go across from Devontae Smith. Make it really challenging on how teams are going to deploy their safeties. It'll open things up for Miles Sanders in the run game uh, and open up the quarterback run game even more for Jalen Hurts when you have a home run hitter like Williams. You only need uh, get him the, a few connections a game and he can completely change the game because he's a threat to score on any time he touches the ball. Such a dynamic playmaker. 19th overall, I have the Saints taking Tyler Smith, left tackle from Tulsa. They got to replace Teron Armstead. Smith is total, his Saints player written all over him in terms of the skill set with size, speed, athleticism, freaky athlete. I think he'd be a really good fit there for New Orleans. Okay, 20th overall, Malik Willis to the Steelers. I've had this pick projected for a long time. I don't see... I don't think I'm going to change it uh, before the draft. I think that Willis gets to 20, that he's the Steelers guy. I think uh, his personality is a great fit there for Mike Tomlin and the Steelers organization. Uh, so I could definitely see them pulling the trigger on him to be that franchise quarterback to replace Big Ben. 21st overall, I have the Patriots taking Daxton Hill, cornerback safety from Michigan. I think this pick makes a lot of sense in terms of the Patriots like variable defenders. Daxton Hill can play corner, can play safety as best as a nickel corner, but he has the size and speed to be an outside corner. They just lost J.C. Jackson. They've had some age and attrition at safety. Obviously, they got Kyle Duggar in, but they could use another guy to go with them. So I think Hill's flexibility can do a variety of things, be a really good fit there for New England. 22nd overall, I have the Packers taking Chris Alave, wide receiver from Ohio State. Get them a speedy, fast playmaker for Aaron Rodgers, a home run hitter. I think Alave could hit the ground running in the NFL uh, if he lands with Green Bay. 23rd overall, I have the Cardinals taking Trevor Penning, left tackle from Northern in Iowa, give them more offensive line protection for Kyler Murray, uh, help them run the ball. I think that'd be a nice pick there for Arizona. 24th overall, I have the Cowboys taking Tyler Linderbaum, center from Iowa. They could use a center upgrade. They could kick by ads to guard. Uh, Linderbaum is plug-and-play player, really fast and athletic at the point of attack. Uh, safe pick, uh, safe pick to turn into a really good pro. Uh, so I think Linderbaum to Dallas makes sense there. 25th overall, I have the Bills taking Nick Petit Ferrer, left tackle from Ohio State. They can move him around, put him at guard, put him at right tackle. He's got a really good skill set, versatile, so I could see him uh, being a guy that's moved around and helps teams at a variety of spots, especially as a rookie. Uh, and in time, he could develop into being a starting left tackle, but he's got a good skill set with a lot of upside, so he could help the Bills, whether it's guard or right tackle or left tackle with an injury to Dawkins. They have flexibility there, uh, help them protect Josh Allen, and obviously that's a necessity for them to go anywhere uh, and to make this run at a Super Bowl, which they're obviously making a hard push to do. 26th overall, I have the Titans taking Kenyon Green, uh, guard from Texas A&M. He also played left tackle for Texas A&M. For the Titans, he'd be a guard, plug-and-play upgrade for them, help them run the ball with Derrick Henry. Really smooth, polished pass protector, uh, plug-and-play player, very safe. I think Green would make a lot of sense for the Titans. 27th overall, I have the Bucks taking Zion Johnson plug-and-play starter at guard for them after Ali Marpet retired. 
uh, with him and Shaq Mason now I think the guards are settled you got your center back you have your tackles back protect Tom Brady is always critical for that offense uh, and opening holes for Leonard Fournette and I think Johnson has plug and play starting potential in the NFL. 28th overall I have the Packers taking Traylon Burks wide receiver from Arkansas. Burks is sliding. His pro day run was uh, disappointing I think even worse than the combine from what I've heard from sources. I mean it varies because every you know the scouts each have their own clicker so uh, one guy might have it at four five seven another might have it at uh four five eight four five nine four five six or four six uh four five six <laughs> any of that but anyways he ran slow at the combine ran slow at the pro day so i think burks is sliding but the packers need multiple receivers i could see uh them taking one a couple in the early rounds they have two first two seconds wouldn't surprise me at all uh if they come away with two receivers and i think burks and alave you got a big possessional guy you got a speed guy that really would make sense for uh in terms of the two to tackle it with a different kind of guys x receiver z receiver uh and then you have a slot receiver coming back and randall cobb as well and with some of the other guys they have there so uh, i think green bay tackling the receivers with two picks here uh early in the draft makes a ton of sense for them 29th overall i have the chiefs taking christian watson wide receiver from north dakota state i think he is going to be a pick here for the chiefs or the packers possibly buffalo the patriots uh arizona i think watson uh with his size and speed uh is gonna go in late in the first round he's had a phenomenal off season was really good at the senior bowl tore up the combine uh big fast athletic and i think he would be a great fit in the chiefs as a, a guy to help replace tyreek hill 30th overall i have the chiefs taking Devin lloyd linebacker from utah give them a linebacker upgrade they have a few recent second round picks now they have a trio with depth and rotational uh, talent there for Kansas City. 31st overall, I have Cincinnati taking Kyler Gordon, cornerback from Washington. Give them uh, a corner that can help improve the play immediately. He's smooth, polished, really was well coached there at Washington. Uh, so I think he could come in and be a slot corner immediately and then in time develop into a potential outside corner, rotate him outside. Uh, just gives them depth and playmaking ability, coverage ability right away. 32nd overall, I have the Lions taking Lewis Seen safety from Georgia. They could use a safety upgrade with Tracy Walker. Seen just was phenomenal in the combine interviews. Uh, leader, hard worker, really smart football IQ. I think he would be a really good upgrade there for the Lions. They need another strong safety to go with Walker and seen uh, just had a really good season of tape as well as those great intangibles so uh and that worked out well as well so i think seen is going to go late one early two and turn into a really good pro 39th overall we'll get to the teams here that don't have first round picks i have the bears taking drake jackson uh edge rusher from usc obviously they have to replace khalil mack they have so many needs so many directions they can go uh, so the Bears are really a, a toss-up on you could throw anybody there aside from a quarterback uh, and it would probably pretty much make sense for Chicago. Uh, 42nd overall I have the Colts taking Roger McCreary cornerback from Auburn. Uh, similar the Colts have a few directions they could go left tackle wide receiver cornerback uh, of the when I mocked it out McCreary was the best player available give them a corner to replace Rocky Sin. 61st overall I have San Francisco taking Jaquan Brisker you got Jakeski Tart uh, still a free agent they haven't brought him back Brisker could come in and play immediately really uh, physical defender makes plays in coverage tough run defender has a lot of upside I think that'd be a nice pick for San Francisco 64th overall I have Denver taking Rasheed Walker left tackle from Penn State they can put him on the right side bookend it give Russell Wilson better protection there get to the 
All right, that's second round teams. Third round teams, we got two, the Raiders at 86. I have them taking Tariq Woolen, the cornerback from UTSA. Great skill set, big, fast, athletic, um, but very raw. Needs a lot of development. I know there's been media hype of him possibly going in the first round, but from talking with team people, I haven't heard uh, a team with a grade on him that high. Now, maybe a team's out there. I haven't asked all 32 teams, but I've spoken to a handful and they had him all as like a third rounder at the highest because he needs a lot of development in terms of coverage technique and whatnot so uh, I have him in the third round the Raiders obviously need more cornerback talent uh, Woolen could be a nice developmental player for them 102nd 102 uh, overall, Miami's first pick. I have them taking Damian Pierce running back from Florida. I think this would be a dream come true pick for Miami. Pierce is a load as a runner. He is tough. He's physical. He dominated at the Senior Bowl, was really good in pass protection as well. But he is a big physical back, and he can contribute in the passing game. So when teams are playing their safeties deep uh, because of Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell, you're going to be able to see a lot of seven-man fronts, and you get a physical back like Pierce that can pound the defense. He's used to the Florida heat. Uh, great worker, great kid, great intangibles. I think that'd be just a dream come true pick there for Miami with a guy in the third round that could come in and contribute immediately and help them uh, to try and get things going there with Tua and all the resources they've put into that offense. Uh, with the receivers and Teron Armstead. So that's this week's mock. Next week, I'm going to be doing a video with Walt and Jacob. Uh, we'll be doing a mock draft, the three of us, so that's always fun. I really enjoy it. I'm excited for that. Get some interesting uh, picks with the three minds coming together, looking at things differently. So check that out. Of course, as always, got the mocks uh, updated uh, every week or multiple times during the week, depending on what happens with trades and whatnot. So our mocks are updated, position rankings, scouting reports, tons of those going up on the site every day uh, and I also have the position reviews going now which are fun articles really do a deep dive into the different positions looking at uh, the class grade ranking the guys from last year's prospects and this year's prospects in terms of the early rounders looking at who's the safest pick who's got the most bust potential and then ranking them by attribute uh, you know uh, the top guys for this year's class so for quarterbacks it could be you know some of the different ap attributes like accuracy have a ranking there and a description uh, arm strength etc so uh, those articles I get a lot of uh, people emailing me asking for them when they're going to come back but they're up uh, almost all completed I think we have just the O-line and linebackers that are going to go up soon and then they're all done but check those out as well and of course as always I love you guys you're the best I really appreciate you watching thanks so much send it to your friends like it share it subscribe all that stuff I really appreciate it and I'll be back with you guys soon and of course you can always email me go to walterfootball.com see my email there if you want to email me any thoughts or comments I always respond to fan emails so uh, hope you guys are doing well take care be safe I'll be back with you soon